In this video, I quickly want to go over a new browser that I'm testing. It's called Zen Browser. It's the one you see on the screen, which is probably going to become my default browser from now on. First of all, let me explain the reasons why I'm switching to this browser. And let me give you a quick demo as well. I spend most of my day in the terminal. As you can see here, this is Ghosty. This is my terminal. I'm going to switch to my .files latest directory. I have a key map for that. And the way that I navigate between my different projects is using team accessions. So I'm going to bring that up right now with another key map. This is the way that I do it. I scroll through different sessions or I have shortcuts that take me to different sessions. But notice that my way of navigating stuff is vertically. I'm used to it. And as you may know, most of the browsers nowadays have the tabs horizontally. And that does not match with my workflow in the terminal, which is where I spend most of my day. If I also open the buffers here that I have in Neobim, I have another key map for that. Just shift H. You're going to notice that I have six buffers open here, as you can see. You can also tell this by the number here on WinBar. If you want to learn more on how I navigate buffers, sessions, and all that in Neobim and in the terminal, I have a video which just the one shown here on the screen, how I navigate between buffers in Neovim. So I explain how I set up everything there in detail. The Brave browser introduced vertical tabs not too long ago, I think. I gave it a try, but I didn't quite like it. But I do like how this Send Browser works. So now let me show you how I navigate in this browser. I'm going to type a key map here, hyper S and then H or L to move down or up. That's something that I configured in macOS. So I'm just going to type that right now and you'll be able to see that the sidebar shows up when I'm moving between the different tabs. Let's say that I want to go to this one. I just let go and it automatically hides that sidebar and I'm in this tab. What if I want to go to a different one? Let's say that I want to go back to XOA. The same thing again. I just go up here and it hides automatically as well. What if I want to open new tabs or create new tabs? Just use the default key map that you use in every browser. In macOS, that's Command T. Command T, notice that I'm pressing that here. A lot of new tabs were open. What if I want to close tabs easily? Just going to navigate here between them. Let's say that I want to close all the tabs that I opened here at the bottom. I have a key map for that. So if I just press the letter E on them, just going to close the tabs real quick. I can keep navigating. I can go to another tab if I want, and it automatically hides the sidebar. So this is the feature that I like the most so far about this browser, this sidebar that shows me the tabs only when I need them and that it goes away when I don't need it to be on the screen anymore. If you want to learn how I configure the mappings in macOS, how I switch between the tabs, how I close them, how I switch between team accessions, change the system settings in macOS with key maps, switch between all my different apps using key maps, and basically everything related to key maps, you can watch this video, Carabiner Elements Configuration. I explain everything in detail there. Okay, so if you notice here on the right hand side, I have a section here, how to install. Let me go to this link here real quick and you're going to find the repo for the browser. They do have a website. If I click on this here, LC, it's going to bring up that in a new tab. Here is the website. I don't like this too much. I prefer going to the repo and this is where I got the instructions on how to install it. You can download it from the website or if you are a macOS advanced user, you can do it through brew. The command is right here. This is the way that I installed it. After installing it, just open it and that's it. Let me show you some other features that I like about this browser. You're going to notice that I'm going to press option C on my keyboard and the URL has been copied to the clipboard. You can see that message there. I'm going to bring up my daily notes, hyper TR, which is another key map that I have. And I'm going to type here, link C. I'm going to type control Y to accept this. And I'm just going to type something here, send browser, for example. So notice that it copied the link in my clipboard and I was able to paste it here. Let's go back here and let's grab a different link. Let me go to another site. Let's go to my dot files. For example, all of the configuration is here in my dot files, everything related to NeoVim, my macOS configuration. If you like this repo, make sure to start it. You can do that here on the top right corner. So let's say that I want to copy the link to this repo. I'm just going to type option C. You're going to notice the same message. The URL has been copied to the clipboard. I'm going to jump back to my daily note again. I'm going to type here link C. Control Y to accept that completion. And I'm just going to put here dot files, for example. You're going to notice that both of the links are there. So I do like that feature quite a lot. What you see here when I type link C and you see a snippet there, this is Blink, the completion engine, the one that allows me to insert snippets here. I can navigate between these different options and insert one of them. I have a video about Blink in them. I released this video two days ago. A wonderful plugin. So I would highly recommend you to go and check this video out if you would like to learn how to create custom snippets in them and how to configure Blink. Okay, so just let me delete this real quick. Let me switch to the browser. I have another key map for that, which is hyper AK. That's what I use to switch to the browser. Hyper AJ is to switch to my terminal. And if I type this key here by itself, control, it's just going to switch back to the previous app. Like if I was pressing command tab.
If I type here control E, I can toggle this compact mode. This shows me all the tabs in case that I don't want to have them hidden. You can have them visible all the time and I can navigate between them. If I type control E again, it's going to hide them. So that's the way that I configure the key maps. But let me go to the settings real quick and I'm going to show you where this is. So if we go here to the settings, you just go to system settings. Here you select the browser layout. The one that I'm using is this single toolbar. So the toolbar is shown here on this sidebar. But if you don't want to have it there, you want to have it at the top of the browser, you can choose this other layout. Notice that the search bar or whatever that is called is shown here always. So if we keep scrolling down here a little bit more, just going to find the settings that I changed. This one, I'm not sure if it comes enabled by default or not, but this is the one that shows the toolbar pop up when I'm switching to new tabs in compact mode. So that's why you see that it shows up and then it hides again. What else did I modify here? I don't think I modified anything else here in this tab. If you look here on the right hand side, disable new tab button, which is the one that is shown here. Show new tab button on tab list. If I show the tab list and I click this, notice this button that shows up there. I don't need it. That's why I just hit it from there. Let me show you the key maps that I configured. If I go here to the keyboard shortcuts section, um, toggle compact mode. Notice that I set it with Control E, as you can see there, is the third one. Let me see what else did I change. Um, all of these are defaults. Let me try to remember and see if I changed something else. This one, copy current URL. I did this with option C. So the only thing that you have to do is click here, then type the keys, option C, and then what you have to do is type escape and that accepts it. If I type option C, it's gonna copy the URL to the clipboard. What else? There's a lot of shortcuts as you can see here. The rest of the settings are just defaults if I remember correctly. Also, I want to show you that if you use one password, let me just toggle the sidebar here on the left and uh, notice that I have one password here. There's something that you need to do in one password so that it works with this browser. Let me switch to one password real quick and I'm going to go here to the settings, one password. You have to come here into browser, add browser and add it because otherwise when you add your password, it's not going to recognize it even if the password is correct. So just make sure that you keep that in mind. It also has a um, bookmarks option. If I type command B, it's going to show me the bookmarks bar also vertically, which is very nice. I don't use bookmarks as you're able to tell. I'm using Raycast here. And if I type something here like that latest here, I have uh, a bookmark and I can get to it and it's going to open it in my browser. So I don't use the bookmarks in any of my browsers. I use a different app that is called Raindrop. So I sync all of my bookmarks there and it doesn't matter which computer I'm using. I call them from Raindrop. If you want to learn more on how I use Raindrop, if you want me to create a video about it, let me know down in the comments. There's another application that I want to show you on macOS. It's called Open In. It's right here. Let me open it. And the reason that I use this app is because I like to open in different links in different browsers. So if I come here to this browser section, you're going to notice that I added all of the different browsers that I have. Just going to remove this because I don't use Firefox, I think. And here you can specify rules. The links that are coming from this app, for example, in your face, that's the way that it's called. And if you scroll down here, you can select the app. You can tell it to open the links from that app in Brave Browser. All of the other links, the default or the ones that I don't have any rules for, I have this configured. So they are all open with this Zen Browser app, but you can specify different rules. Let's say that Facebook, you want it to open on a different browser. You can do that here. A pretty neat app. I think it's paid. I get it with the setup subscription. But if you're interested in doing what I just mentioned, I think you're going to love this app and find it really useful. How did I find out about this browser? A few months ago, I noticed a post in Twitter or X by Folky. He mentioned here about this browser, Zen Browser. I didn't test it at the time. I didn't want to invest time on it, but today I finally decided to do it. And so far it's been working great. And I do think it's going to become my default browser. As you were able to tell, I was here in um, my browser. And if I press hyper TR, it takes me to my daily note. Doesn't matter which app I'm on. Whenever I type that key map, it always takes me to my daily note. In case I need to quickly write something down in today's date, you can see the day here. If I open the rest of the notes here, you can see all of them there. If you want to learn how I set that up, it's quite a bit advanced, but it's quite nice once you set it up. The video is here and I explain everything in detail there. I don't think I have anything else that I wanted to add on this video. I'm going to keep playing around with this browser, but so far I'm liking it very much. If you like this type of content, let me know. If you're interested in seeing more content related to macOS, NeoVim, let me know down in the comments. If you find these videos useful, let me know down in the comments as well. There's a few of you that do let me know that the videos are helpful, but I'd like to hear more so that I know which videos are useful and which ones are not. All right, so that's it for today. Hope this video is useful. I'll see you in the next video.